In this video, we're going to look at sewer design. So we've got the project open from earlier. And I can go and just save this if I want. Uh, you can go and save it in the next uh, folder, which will be your sewer design folder. You can also save your DTM. You go to your display settings and you'll see you can turn off your road. We need to create a sewer data file to store the sewer data base. So we we'll go and check on for the sewer and then we'll browse to the folder that we want to be in. I'm just making sure that I'm in tutorial 4 and my own folder that I've created for myself. I'm going to call the sewer database. doesn't exist and so I make sure I just to create it. To save time we're going to import a, a network that already exists. You, there are a number of ways of uh, importing data. You can import data from CAD um, or from ASCII. You can also import draw-in data from uh, the, using the graphical insert so in this case, we're going to do the ASCII file. I'm going to bring in the nodes and link data. I browse to the location where I'm storing this information. So this will be a comma delimited file. See, we've got the, uh, the node name, the next node. If you're bringing in, an, this is why sometimes it's easier to bring it in from CAD or from a drawing, because you wouldn't need to think where is, which is the next node. But with uh, importing from ASCII, you would definitely need to know, tell the computer which node it, that uh, pipe will flow to. I then got the Y and X data. There is a host of other data you can bring in, but we won't need that for today. If it was an existing network, you would definitely want the fixed invert level and possibly even the diameters for the pipes. So there I've brought in the network from ASCII file. We use the display settings to show any information about the network. So in this case, I'm looking at the nodes, and I'd like to see the name of the node. So now the node names have been displayed. If I select a node, you can move the text name to be out of the way. I'm going to choose to display information about the links. 
In this case, the links are pipes and they're UPVC. You can see the diameters are zero. Zero indicates auto sizing, and auto, indica auto sizing indicates to tell civil designer please choose the diameter of the pipe to take the required capacities for my network. So you're basically giving civil designer permission to choose the pipe sizes for you. So I'm going to activate the DTM level layer because I want to make sure that that is the to get my cover levels. Okay, so we can then change the, we're going to, um, gra we've graphically marked the network. And now the tool set parameters enables us to change different aspects of the network. So we can go and change all the pipes to be clay if we wanted to. And we can choose the bedding class to change that as well. As I say, you first need to go graphically mark all or upstream or branch and then you can come to tool set parameters. This is only needed if you need to change, globally change a whole lot of items about the network. Um, if you were changing individual links or individual pipes uh, or individual nodes, then you would just uh, select them and right click and say um, sewer operations edit link data or edit node data. But if you want to change a whole lot of information about a whole lot of pipes or links, you would go graphically mark all or upstream and then go tool set parameters and globally change the selected, the graphically marked items. We want to look at the link tables. So here's where you can specify what a link is. You've got clay and you've got different diameters. You can also switch off the 100 diameter if you don't have stock of that or if the municipality doesn't want to use such a small diameter pipe on the network. If you look at the design parameters, you can choose which method you want to um, calculate your design or inflow calculations. You, if you're going to use the unit flow method, then you need to just double check that these values match what you are normally using for those particular class names. Point flows are normally, they are not for, um, for this tutorial. We're going to look at if you want to change your um, how your network searches for items. So we always want to search by node name. So we just update it there. click on this button here that will bring up the search and there you can see it's now brought up this uh, node name each time so you don't have to go and change that each time you open up this dialog it'll automatically node name and now we can type in the node names 
then you can see it's brought up node number one and we can go and populate the inflow classes. So the one method is to click on it uh, or to search for it and the other method is to graphically select it. And now you're calculating the inflow classes per node. This is an older method of working. There is a much more newer method of working which you can check out. I have created YouTube videos on it. Just search for civil designer, sewer, property connections or earth connections depending on which video, you, uh, the name of the video for your region. Uh, this is more of a schematical approach where you would put two or three or four house connections onto a sewer to calculate the capacity required for the pipe. But we do have property connections which also ensure that the property's sewage would drain from 100% of the property. So here you can see your inflow classes per node. So here you can, instead of searching for each node, you can run down the list and look for the nodes and then put the populate each one in here. As I say, this is an older method of working. There are newer methods of working.
Great, we can now look at analyzing our network. We can then um, analyze the network, we can choose our tolerance, we can also choose the proportional depth of flow. So once it reaches 80% full or 75% full, it's going to automatically size the pipe up to the next available pipe size in your catalog or your link tables. This um, sizing up won't take place if you have fixed the diameter. If you've set it to zero or to auto sizing, depending on which version of the software you're using, it will choose the size for you based on capacity. We'll allow for infiltration of 15% and we can also apply peak factors should you wish. We're going to recalculate the length from coordinates and we'll also renumber our branches. We're going to model the whole network. At any stage, if you've got any questions about any dialogues, you can always hit the F1 key. This will open up a help file which will explain the dialogue in greater depth. So we've got our different uh, our report or storm have the sewer report here and we can now review it and for now let's just close it and we can go and display our link sizes so we'll go to the display settings we'll go to links and we can also put in the diameter you can choose where you want to put place this diameter And we're going to put the slope in as well. So there you can see we've got the di um, diameter of the pipe, the type of pipe, the length, and the slope. This is a ratio, so we're going to use the one in button beforehand. And we would like to round it, so we're going to put 0.1. So currently it's three uh, decimal places, so we'll change that to one decimal place, and so that's how you can do it. Calculate the quantities. Here you can see your quantities reports for your different pipes, as well as your bedding and your blankets, your culvert lengths, and your man manhole depths, your depth categories for your manholes. In our case, we just have one type of manhole. Looking at the earth connections, we can set up to rather use earth connections. In this case, we can have inside earth, outside earth, and inside the road reserve. So three positions where a sewer earth connection would sit. We have different depth categories to flag if the earth connection is getting too deep or too shallow. can look at adding a mid block sewer here you can see you have a mid block and I'm gonna just clear the graphically marked items I've got to change that to outside earth and we want to calculate the minimum ground on the sides. OK, 
can add the connection. So that's outside earth, so it's still a mid block. Both the inside and outside are both mid blocks. But let's do the outside earth mid block. We'll give it a name. And then we'll click inside to scan the property itself. There you can see the inflow classes is grayed out. If you want to switch that on uh, before you start with your pipe sizing, you can go to Edit Design Parameters and tick the um, Dynamic Inflow Update. Then your Earth connections will also have flows coming into the network. For now, this exercise is just looking at the geometrics of the house connection and making sure that it is low enough to drain the property, but not too low that it's lower than the main line of the pipe. So just moving the, the text to a location where it can be read better. Okay, we're now going to add the mid blocks that are inside the earth. So we'll just to also um, as a tip, you can show your slope arrows to see which way the ground is falling. Gives you a better idea of which way the ground falls. If you're using the UK version of the software, it will be called Property Connections. If you're using the South African version, it's called Earth Connections. I'll change that to Inside Earth because the main line is running inside the oven. We'll just carry on with the naming convention and scan the properties. can then analyze all the earth connections to see where there's possible issues and here you can see these ones drain the property but they then hit the main line lower than the main line 
which means they cannot drain into the main line. So we then need to lower the main line so that it can catch the water from these properties, which we'll now show you how to do. This is dangerous. Sometimes it's better to rather put a main line at the, at the bottom of the property's boundaries rather than lowering the main line because you could get very deep manholes. So uh, be very careful of this next step. It's not always the most suitable scenario. So there you can see the properties. That one was not going to work. It needs to be higher than the main line. And you can't just go and raise the property connection because then it's possible that you won't drain the whole property. So you must rather lower the actual main line for the house connection to drain into. So here we're going to, it's giving you the warning that I've just told you about. So we're going to just drain that or lower that. And now that it's lowered the main line, it wants to reanalyze the main lines network. So we can allow for that. And there you can see now it is connection type one. As I say, this is not always the most applicable. Sometimes you would probably want to uh, put in a, a main line in the south of that project. So you can see there it's lowered the main line just so you can get to drain the property connections. You can also uh, run reports and um, to print or ASCII of your network should you wish. And there you've got your setting out information all drafted up to get that out to the contractor to install. You can also plot out sewer long sections. We can plot all and auto scroll to next page. And there you see all the long sections get drafted up automatically for you. All our sheet files when they as layouts inside your project are live and dynamically linked to your 3D model. If anything changes in your model, these long sections will update.